Hi, here we are to continue um, talking about using Open Weather Map and JavaScript and making an app that displays the weather using this, this uh, service. Um, in the last videos, we talked about, um, you know, connecting to jQuery on the Google CDN and then making a call to the Open Weather Map API with your app ID, right? And in those videos, um, our, our app just pretty much just posted the data to the console, right? So, uh, you know, let's, let's go take a look at that just as a quick review. Um, so I'll open this up in Safari here, or you could use any browser, right? And, you know, we don't see any output because our page doesn't have any output. But if we look at the console, we can see that um, our app loads the weather as an object here. And when I open up that object, you can see these are all the properties, right? And these will correspond to the data that was shown on the Open Weather Map API that we looked at. But anyway, we can see what they have here. Um, and you can see that the name right here is the name of the city. So this is the city name right here. It says London, right? And uh, why does it say London? Well, it says London because our path right here right after it says weather, there's a question mark and then the Q, and then it says Q equals London comma UK, right? So this area between the equal sign, let's actually zoom in on that a little closer here, between the, the equal sign and the ampersand right here is the value for the variable Q. So in the query string here, after the question mark, you create name value pairs. These are kind of like variables, and these are the values for those variables. And then when you start a new variable, you start with the ampersand and create a new variable name and the equal sign, and then you continue from there, right, with the next value. Um, so this one right here, though, sets the, the name of the city that you will get the weather for. So if I was to type in San Francisco, Right. Oops, I misspelled that. There we go. Right. If I type in San Francisco there, I could, you know, I can just type in San Francisco. I could even type in, you know, CA for California or US. There's probably more than one San Francisco in the US, though. I'm only aware of one. Um, there's probably another one somewhere else. But anyway, I'll just put California there. And then uh, when I refresh here, you can see that it gives me the data again. And then it says name is San Francisco, right? And temperature is 284. Let's try another one. What if I type in um, the name Tokyo, right? So there's probably only one Tokyo in the world, right? Um, we'll type that in there. We'll refresh it here. And then I see the data here and you can see it's 286 degrees Kelvin in Tokyo, right? So I'm getting the data here. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's for that particular location, right? So, so uh, what we need to do with our, with our app is we need a way to input the city name here and then insert it into this string. So what we'll do is we'll add, and I'm going to put it up here above all of our JavaScript stuff. We probably need a tag of some kind to organize all of our data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a form, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to give this form an ID and we'll call it city form. How about that, right? Call it city form. And then um, what we'll do is we'll add in a div with an input. And our input tag will have a type and the type will be text. And then it'll also need an ID so we can identify it with JavaScript. So we'll say city name, okay? So what does this do? Well, um, this creates a single line input and normally the input is an inline element. So I wrapped it in a div so that it would act as a block. This will put it on its own line. So if I add another element, it'll end up below this one rather than next to it, right? And then the type right here says what type of input this is. So type text is a single line input. Um, and then the ID name here will allow us to access the value from the input field with JavaScript. Okay, let's add another input. This time I'm gonna use input type um, 
submit. I need the equal sign there, right? And then you can give this an ID name also, but we, we probably don't need it. So we'll just leave it off. Um, so this is input type submit. So input type submit, it creates a submit button. And the submit button is special. When you click the submit button, it submits the form, right? So essentially it wraps all the data up for the form. It collects all of the data from any input fields in the form and then sends it to the form action. So normally you would have a form action here and the form action is a path to some address on the web, um, we're gonna handle the form action with JavaScript. So I'm gonna leave the form action off there. And what I'll do is I'll set up a JavaScript here to read the form when you click the submit button. Okay, and we'll do it this way. So since we're using jQuery, we can use <clears throat> the jQuery selector and we can target our city form, right? So this is the ID name that we had here, right? So city form, and we use the hash mark to say that it's an ID, right? Okay, and then we'll say dot submit. So this is a helper method that essentially um, sets up an on submit. So on submit's an event handler in JavaScript that says a form was submitted. Submit's kind of a shortcut for that. So we just say dot submit in jQuery and um, this will handle the submission of this form. So what we'll do is we'll add a function here to actually do the handle, handling of the form, right? And this function right here will be called when you submit the form, right? And what's gonna happen is the computer's going to give us, or the browser's gonna give us an event object that describes you know, what just happened, right? Hey, what event just occurred? Well, submitting the form was an event, and then this event object just describes all the details of, of that action, right? Okay, and we're gonna use this in a special way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say default. okay? So prevent default um, prevents the default behavior of the form. And remember, I said the form normally has an action, and the action is a path. You know, if I set the path here to google.com, what would happen is when you click the submit button, your browser would get redirected to Google. Okay, right? So this, normally what you do is you set the action here to the address of a file that you're going to use to handle the form data. Okay, and that can be an HTML file, it could be, you know, a PHP file or, you know, anything that you're using on the server to handle your form data. Um, in our case, we're gonna handle our form with JavaScript. And so what I want is I don't want the form to reload this page or load or try and load another page. So by calling event.preventDefault, I'm going to prevent the default behavior of the form. In other words, it's not gonna load another page or try and redirect to a new address, okay? So that means that, you know, at this point, submitting this form will cause nothing to happen, right? So, because this will prevent the default behavior and so nothing will happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make something happen here, right, to handle the form, right? So what we'll do is we'll get the city name. So we'll say var, you know, city name equals, and what I wanna do is I wanna get the value from this field, which I called city name, right? So what we'll do is we'll say dollar sign, we'll use the jQuery selector, and then we'll use the ID name of the um, of the I you know of the of the input field here, and then we'll say dot val. So dot val gives you the value from a a form element. Okay, so the value is in this case for the input field is what you typed into it. For different types of form elements, it might be a different value. Like if it was a select menu, it would give you the 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 item that you selected the value of the option that you that you chose. In this case, it's going to just give me um, the text that you typed into the input, okay? So now that we've got the city name here, what we wanna do is we wanna take this city name and put it in here, right? Replace Tokyo with whatever you typed into the field and then call you know the get method again. So really what we need to do with this is we need to wrap this into a into a function. So we'll say function, you know, um, get weather. Okay. And then um, I'm going to actually cut this and paste it inside our new function here. 
So we've got get weather, and maybe get weather should take <clears throat> the name of a city, right? So we'll put city here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to replace Tokyo. So make sure you don't lose the ampersand or the equal sign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the quotation marks here, right, where Tokyo used to be, and then put the two plus signs there and put city in between them. Okay, so what this is going to do is, is it's going to create a string on this side that's completed at this quotation mark. Use the plus sign to concatenate or connect this string that's in the variable city with the string on the left, and then use the plus sign on the right to connect the rest of this string here with the, the string that we have on the left, right? So that puts it all together. So essentially plus is the concatenation operator or the, the way that you combine strings, okay? So if I have the city as a string here, I can combine it with the plus sign. Okay, so now that we've got that done, what we need to do is when you, when you um, call on the submit here, when you submit the form, we need to call the get weather function and pass in the city name, right? So, so here we have city name, we're passing it into this function, and it will essentially, the value that you typed here will end up in the variable city down here, right? And there we go. So uh, now that this is wrapped in a function, it won't load the weather immediately. It's going to wait for us to submit the form first, right, with, with a valid city name. Right, let's give it a try. So we'll save that. Um, I'll go back to my page here, and you can see that I've got my form here, and I can type stuff into it. Um, I'm going to zoom in on that, right? And then I'm going to get the inspector here and put it at the bottom of the page. And then I'll type in a name. Let's type in Paris. And then I'll click Submit, and you can see it gives me a new object here and you can see I've got the weather for Paris. It's 276 degrees Celsius, 86 percent humidity. Kind of sounds like it's raining. Is it raining in Paris? Let's see. Um, weather object here. Oh, I guess it's clear sky. Hmm. Let's try another one. Let's try Moscow, right? Um, oh, look, there's another weather object that just appeared at the bottom there. Let's open up the weather here. Oh, it's snowing in Moscow. Hey, so I think that's working, right? Let's try London again, right? Um, so also, hitting return in this field will end, will submit the form, right? So um, we don't actually have to even hit the submit button there, but let's see what the weather like is like in... Uh, oh, it's cloudy, broken clouds in London. So anyway, thanks for watching, and then I hope that that gets you started on your weather app and gives you a better understanding of, of how to work with the, with the forms, jQuery, and the, uh, the Open Weather Map API.